Everything in life revolves around selling. Everyone trades their skills, knowledge and time for money. In this video, step by step, how to get your first client selling business to business. Starting from the mindset and opening through arousing interest, how in the right way to present your product and solution, how to handle sales objections and smoothly close a sale. Selling is a skill just like any other skill you have ever learned in your life. Knowledge taken from book has no practical value and must be adapted to a specific market and industry to be effective. This is why the willingness and readiness to make mistakes is so essential. When you start to do something, you make mistakes. In theory, everyone knows that. In practice, most people get discouraged too fast. Too fast to master the more complex competence. Think of it this way. When you were a child, how long did you learn to walk before you realized you couldn't make it? It's absurd, right? No matter how many falls and how many failures along the way, there's no way anyone would quit. The same, you are able to learn almost anything if you are determined enough. The fact is that vast majority of people stop learning when they reach a certain age. Mostly because they no longer believe in the possibility of changing their own behaviors. Back to the point. If you decide to learn sales skills and you want to influence people, it's a matter of choice and your mindset, not a talent. If you don't give up after your first failures, whether you are shy, introvert, you're afraid of rejection, you lack of social skills and professional knowledge, you still can be great. Now a bit about learning process. Knowledge is one thing and skills are another. Knowledge is important, but it's true experience, genuine change takes place. For instance, if someone is a fan of, let's say, football, he can be up to date with all results and statistics from all major leagues, know all the players of his beloved football team, their strengths and weaknesses, opponents' strengths and weaknesses, game strategies, be familiar with training plans, and even know how to spin the ball and hit it from a distance if he had never played on the real pitch never smelled the grass, didn't feel the pressure of the event and opponents will not have enough strength to last 90 minutes chasing the ball on the pitch, not to mention about applying any strategy and technique. Just because he saw how a professional player is hitting the ball doesn't mean he will hit it the same. He won't. It will never happen. All this knowledge is practically useless, at least at this moment in time. Knowledge has a real value when it goes hand in hand with experience, no matter if it's a sport of any other profession. The same goes for sale. What you need is to focus on three main points, namely inner game, which is your mindset. Second, gathering intelligence. I mean extensive knowledge about your product, your competition, market and potential clients, their needs, expectations and habits. And finally, on action, which is testing everything you know and the ability to apply gained knowledge in practice. If this last point is not met, all the rest is worth as much as the mentioned theoretical football knowledge. Only testing turns knowledge and abstract rules into skills. Hollywood movies and videos on YouTube show the born sales guy as someone who is outspoken, eloquent, often nonchalant. If this is the image of the ideal salesperson that you keep in your mind. That's the first thing that needs to be clarified and fixed. All kinds of sales techniques aimed at arousing a prospect's emotion and closing a sale by taking an advantage of temporary state of mind don't build long-term relationships in business. It's good to know these techniques and be aware that they exist, but that's not the case. All these kind of techniques work well everywhere where relationships are not as important as the single cell itself. Often concerns product, let's say, questionable quality and whether the client is satisfied later, it's a secondary issue. The buyer remorse after concluding this type of transaction is usually the hallmark of this type of sale. Today I will not talk about how to persuade someone to do something. I will focus on how to achieve real success in sales by arousing interest and building relationship or long-term cooperation, where the one-off deal is not something we really care and cannot be the core of the business. These two approaches have many points in common, much more in common than differences, but these small differences will make you a professional salesperson and trusted 
business partner, which is especially important in a world where people are on guard against frauds and hustlers and where the stakes are really high. More important for a beginner that what he doesn't know is what he knows and what he shouldn't forget about. So a small advice for the beginning, don't try to be too smart. You can definitely achieve more as a regular guy than pretending to be a professional if you don't have experience yet. You will go farther by being modest than by bragging and making empty promises. Don't focus too much on the superlatives of your offer. Just listen carefully to what your prospect says. Attentive listening will bring you much closer to your goal and will allow you to successfully close a sale in the future. The first thing you should be very clear and aware is who your client actually is and where you can find him. Although it may seem obvious, usually this awareness clarifies over time with the first successes and failures. How precisely you are able to define your target group, potential client and the best approach have a decisive impact on the ultimate success. Correct identification and defining of these seemingly simple things will help you to avoid many disappointments and save a lot of time. One of the most important things in sales is time. What quality are your leads and clients you are working on have a direct impact on tomorrow's success? When you are just starting out, you need to focus on the clients you can get here and now. At the same time, working on those who require more patience. Especially at the beginning, you may need first results very quickly. Imagine that someone is throwing a money from a window on the street and your task is to collect as big amount as possible. Cash is flying in the air, laying on the street, but you are not alone. There are people like you who have the same job to do. Will you start to collecting one and five dollar bills or will you be chasing one hundred dollar bills? What decision you make will have a decisive influence on your final outcome. If you don't look around, you won't know. The same in sales. Take a time to make a research before you decide where to focus your energy. Start broad and slowly with increasing knowledge about the market, clients' preferences and strengths of cards you keep in your hand, narrow a circle of your interest. Being successful in sales is closely related to time. Someone is sitting in the shade today because someone planted a tree a long time ago, as the saying goes. So what you do today will bear fruit in the future. Building a sales market from scratch is not a job for weeks and even months, but often years, so you have to be smart. Don't waste your time on people and companies that don't need your product. Another thing worth mentioning is that not everyone can become your client. You are not able to please everyone and overcome all objections. You may not like it, but it's how it is. Your closing rate will never be 100% no matter how skilled you are and how good your product is. What you need to care the most is that your basket, I mean the leads you are working on, is always full. Continuous work on the database of qualified prospects is one of the most important tasks in sales. If you ever watched Gold Rush, a reality TV series on Discovery Channel, you might have learned a bit about the gold mining process. This looks something like this. Someone gets the rights to the plot on which he starts digging. These activities require a lot of effort, labor and financial resources. All the excavated soil and rock is a potential mass where precious gold nuggets may be found. But still, extracting gold to the light of the day is a laborious process. The whole mass of soil must be carefully sewed, large rocks removed and right with water to reveal pieces of pure gold. Referring to the sales process, the market is like a plot where you don't mine gold but similarly get qualified leads. If the gold seekers runs off excavated soil, their chances of success drop to zero. New potential clients are just like this mass of soil. You must constantly getting new leads to grow. Hard working mining machines are your daily routines. Cold calls, gathering intelligence, meeting clients. The fuel to run these heavy machines is your motivation and everything that makes up your inner game. The best plan is like big gold nugget that must be extracted from all this mass of worthless seal and silt. Theoretically, all this dirt is valuable because there are pieces of gold in it, but it's your job to bring that gold out. 
taking care of having a lot of new leads and focusing your energy where you see the best chances of winning is the most important factor for success selling business to business. Okay, now let's focus on how to attract the attention of a new prospect and minimize the likelihood of rejection. What you need to do is find one thing that might be of interest to your client. And I don't mean necessarily a product you offer its advantages and benefits. I mean why your prospect should take time to meet you and seriously consider the idea of working with you and your company. This one thing will determine whether or not you get your chance. During the first contact with a prospect, which usually takes a form of phone conversation, you should determine whether the prospect has the potential to buy your product and be your client and you have to use that one decisive argument to set a meeting. At this stage, you are not selling anything yet and you are not talking about the details of your offer. You provide basic information, only those that are really necessary. If you positively verify a potential client by asking him a few simple non-invasive questions in a friendly way, your next goal is to set up face-to-face -face meeting. If a client asks for more information, wanting to know more about your company, the product you offer, about terms and conditions, price policy, use all available arguments to talk about it in the face-to-face -face meeting. Alternatively, provide only general information that raises more questions than answers. All this for one reason only. If the client finds that he knows everything he needs, most likely he will lose interest especially if he doesn't need similar solution at that moment in time. And when the demand will appear, he will ask the regular supplier because in the meantime he will forget about you. A face-to-face -face meeting is the most effective form of communication between people and the best way of building a rapport. No other form of contact gives as many opportunities to influence people as meeting them face-to-face. -face. Keep it in mind and always seek direct contact whenever you encounter a client who you believe is worth your time. Whether I say that you cannot win a client using your smartphone or any indirect form of contact, definitely not. Of course, it's possible, for instance, when a client is looking for a specific product, is dissatisfied with the service of a regular supplier, your offer is very attractive, there's a shortage of similar products on the market, there can be many reasons, but generally, direct meeting is an indispensable part of the sales process selling business to business. Serious people and large companies don't make strategic decisions over the phone and via internet. They want to be sure they are dealing with a reliable partner they can count on when expected problems arise. When I'm talking about generating interest and focusing on that one thing, I don't mean that you should always use the same argument. Quite the opposite. Flexibility and an open mind are the hallmarks of the best salespeople. This one thing can have many faces. If you work for a well-known company that has a recognizable brand and logo, it might be reason enough to get the prospect initial attention. It's a pure form of emanation of higher value and social proof without having to do anything. So if your company means something on the market you operate in, don't hesitate to use that social proof. If this doesn't apply to you and the company you represent, you may have a unique and innovative solution that may be of interest to your prospect. The possibility of gaining a market advantage is an argument that may appeal to many people. If you truly know your client's problem, you know what he's struggling with on a daily basis, and you are able to prove that, you will get prospect initial attention. What breaks the first line of resistance immediately are mutual friends and recommendation. Good product knowledge and exchange of experience works almost just as well. The paramount goal is to arouse interest and stimulate the imagination. Expectations can even be a bit exaggerated. The point is not to say too much so that initial interest doesn't lose its momentum, but enough to arouse curiosity. Identification of that one thing is crucial for your final success. That's why it's worth taking some time to find extra information about the company and person you are going to talk to to get that hook. Gathering information and doing market research is one of the most important tasks that gives a huge advantage over competition. Knowledge about the client's preferences, why he or she buys from this or that company, what determines these choices, what are the reasons 
fears and concerns. Your job as a professional is to get answers to all these questions. Equally important is how well do you know your competition? When starting out, you may not know how to properly present the solution you offer. You may not be able to handle in a proper way with sales objections. But as soon as possible, you need to learn as much as possible about your competition. Who are you competing with? You have to know their strengths and weaknesses, where you may feel threatened and where you have an advantage. What are their flagship products, delivery time, price level, quality? Having at least basic information at the very beginning will allow you to move more confidently in your market. Position yourself much faster as an expert in your industry, which is extremely important from the point of view of your credibility and for most of clients who prefer to work with professionals who have a broader picture on the market and are able to say something more than just about the merits of their business proposal. The quickest way to get this knowledge is to talk to someone more experienced who has been operating in the same market for years and is doing well. Each market and industry has its own specifics and proven sales models. The best and fastest way to get results is to copy what the best salespeople in your industry do. Contrary to popular belief, most successful people are willing to share their experience and give a hand. So if you look around, you will surely find someone who will give you some tips to help you start it. When meeting your prospect face to face, identify these products from your product portfolio that have the best chance of success and there focus your prospect attention. Many sales people believe that if they bombard their client with a lot of information, they will make a better impression and become more competent in their eyes. But it doesn't work like that. Especially when it's your first meeting, you should be very specific and listen more than talk. I guess you might have heard that in sales, you have to be goal oriented and close a sale as quickly as possible. This stimulate imagination and makes sense, but large, medium and even small businesses don't make decisions impulsively. People who know how to deal with sales reps don't reveal what they think right away. They are too smart for that. They prefer to listen to what another party has to say and use that information for their own benefit and purpose. When your potential client's regular supplier performs well on its commitments, has a satisfactory price level, good logistics and delivery time, high quality, right support, and manage to build relationship, you can't count on luck. From the point of view of running a business, there must be a reason for switching suppliers. It makes no sense to take risks for trivial reasons. That's why you need to find areas where you have the best chance of success. Find niches where you are able to catch prospect interest and come out of the shadows when the right time comes. Everything changes in time. Your prospect may enter new markets, decide to diversify supplier base, regular supplier may fail, virtually anything may happen. Patience and persistence are two of the great virtues of any salesperson. Don't be discouraged if the conversation doesn't go the way you like it. Just explore areas which may be the opportunity for static cooperation and ask the right questions. It's a bit like shopping in a supermarket. You may have a list of things to buy, but who has never taken an extra bar at the checkout? Some purchasing decisions don't require much thought and analysis. Similarly, sometimes it's better to sell a candy bar before you try to talk someone to change the apartment where he has been living for years. Present your product as simple and understandable as possible. Your business proposal should be very clear and leave no questions and doubts. If you give your prospect too many choices, he probably won't make any decisions. Most people are not willing to take risks. Don't look for new and innovative products, but for proven solutions. Prefer things they know and are familiar to them. That's why make your offer look friendly, simple and safe. People from the purchasing department, designers, constructors, engineers responsible for research and development virtually Everyone is afraid of making bad decisions. If they have even the slightest doubt, they will most likely not decide to use your product. Your job is to listen more than to speak, to recognize the motives behind each decision made by your prospect. And I say it again because I know how strong the temptation is. What's more, it's often a camouflage to hide nervousness. People start talking about the company, product, 
advantages of their business proposal, habit clients, and similar things just to avoid the awkward silence. But remember that this way you will not arouse interest and impress anyone. Usually, the first objections you hear won't be the real ones. Most these people, when they hear the first objection, they immediately try to overcome them. We often even prove that their prospect is wrong, but that's the worst thing you can do. Clients tend to say different things. In most cases, it makes no sense to argue with them. Your paramount goal as a sales professional is to recognize business opportunities, certainly not making opponents. And it has nothing to do with assertiveness as some people think. People don't change their minds under the influence of arguments. The decision-making process is unconscious and driven by emotion. People need logical arguments mostly to support their current point of view. Therefore, in the first place, it's necessary to understand the client's mindset and belief system. Then provide logical information that reinforces their current point of view and allows them to explain to their colleagues why they made that decision. Keep in mind that emotions play the decisive role in the decision-making process. If you have proven way to deal with the client's problem, a product that seems perfect, hold a moment before making a presentation. If you do it too early, you will most likely kill the sale. Instead, listen carefully, hit your client's feelings by asking questions and wait for the problem to grow more and more in the prospect mind. By presenting the solution too soon, you take the burden off before it gets more severe and painful. What gives your prospect a feeling of relief? In that moment, he doesn't have to worry about it anymore, which means he will procrastinate. In metaphorical sense, you should recognize your prospect's pain patterns and push them harder. Understanding those feelings and needs is the key to closing a sale. The road to success leads not through immediate relief your prospect from a problem, but through its intensification. No matter how confused it may sound, this is how our psyche is constructed. Nowadays, practically everything people want is within their reach. Widely available, nothing seems special anymore. That's why people are unable to appreciate the value of something that comes too easily. If you want your product and solution to be perceived as something unique and valuable, you have to present it in the right way. Timing is crucial when it comes to selling business to business, as well as understanding of your prospect purchasing behaviors. So, what is the right time? There is no one single answer. It depends on many factors. In general, be patient. Try to put yourself in your prospect's shoes. If you have been struggling with something for a long time, probably the last thing you want is a guy who will tell you with a smile on his face what you really need. Try to lead the conversation in a such a way that your client comes to certain conclusions on his own. This will help you avoid many objections in the future. Be empathic. Presenting the solution clearly in the extreme, it may even sound like some kind of disrespect. Nobody wants to be instructed, especially by someone whom he don't know yet. You have to gain trust first, and this is done by listening. So hold off on giving advice in the early stage before you haven't built common rapport. Give your prospect the opportunity to express his thoughts safely. Sometimes that's what someone might need the most. Don't be afraid to leave the meeting without any binding promises for the future. Long-term cooperation doesn't begin and end with the first meeting. Sales meetings are the easiest and most effective way to build a rapport and trust. Time can be both, your greatest enemy and your greatest ally. The more often you see your prospect, the biggest your chances of building a rapport and closing a sale. So always Leave the door open for the next meeting. Presenting of the solution is one of the best reasons to make this happen. Another question is whether a good sales pitch is important. In my opinion, not at all. Business clients are usually commercially savvy. They met salespeople on a daily basis. This group is definitely less susceptible to marketing than an individual customer. Experienced buyers are able to read the hidden intentions behind beautiful and hefty words very quickly which rarely influence their made decisions. Instead, 
focus on building an image of a reliable consultant who knows what he says and whose priority is to provide the best possible customer service, product and solution. Highlighting the advantages of the product and encouraging to buy are features of aggressive marketing that arouse negative feelings. Prospect may feel like you only care about making a deal, your profit and margin, not about his interest. You will be like one of many guys who may get the chance, but only when a product you offer is the cheapest on the market, but in that case you don't really have to say much anyway. Dealing with clients, you will certainly hear sooner or later that your competition has a better and cheaper product, and that may even be true, but that doesn't mean you have no chance of success. It just means that you have to be smarter and know how to use well the cards you keep in your hand. Market and client knowledge will allow you to smoothly close the sale without having to use any fancy and sophisticated sales techniques, in a gentle way without unhealthy pressure and bad feelings. Make closing a sale a natural result of previous arrangements and talks and your closing rate will be very high. Although it sounds like a cliche, be yourself. As simple as it may seem, a lot of people have problems to chill out. They pretend to be someone they are not. They qualify themselves as it was some kind of contest. All this talking sounds a bit like, I am awesome, my company is awesome, our product and you will be awesome too if you decide to buy. Just let go of cheesy sales pitches. Show respect for your client's intellect and you will go much further than you expect. After gaining trust and sympathy, it's time to become a part of your client's business world. You need to know what's going on. Be familiar with your prospect plans, ongoing and future projects and purchasing agenda. In the case of large companies and leading companies on the market, don't expect to get the best and largest part of the cake just at the beginning. But if you will be patient, consistent and don't let yourself be forgotten, sooner or later you will get your first order. Success in sales is about building and developing business relationships and constantly looking for new prospects and opportunities. Stay active. Don't assume that if it's good now, it will be only better. Companies as well as people come and go. Therefore, constantly expand your client's database and accept the fact that sales is a constant journey. Every company and organization is in motion. Employees come and go. Company policy and technologies change as well as regular suppliers. To be constantly on the top, diversify your turnover and customer base. In this way, you minimize the market risk and you become less sensitive to the loss of every single client. Diversified customer base gives greater freedom and flexibility in terms of price policy and allow you to generate a higher margin. It's no secret that when a client will sense that his input in your business is significant, may try to take advantage of it. Therefore, you must constantly work on your customer base and not be dependent on any single client. Only a healthy approach in this area will allow you to gain stability and allow you for constant growth. Finally, not everyone can become your client, although you may not want to hear that, you need to be realistic and there is a number of reasons for that. But always keep in mind that there are many other who are waiting for your service, who perfectly match your product portfolio and with whom you can be long, fruitful and lasting relationship. That's why don't take rejection personally and don't give up too quickly. Sometimes you just need more time to make things happen. Use your common sense and trust your intuition. If you don't feel comfortable, just be aware that it's a process and your feelings will change over time. Typically, client acquisition is the most problematic and frustrating process for most salespeople. We're often associated with confusion, anxiety, and fear of rejection. Whatever it may be, make your weakness your strength and constantly improve your skill set. Just work on things that cause you the greatest discomfort. This is the simplest and fastest way to achieve the significant progress. Every industrial market has its rules and many factors contribute to success. But people and their habits are always very similar. By following these few simple rules, you will be able to get extraordinary results even if you don't have any sales experience and track record. Just stick to them and slightly modify orders to suit best your industry. Sales is a job where creativity plays a very important role. 
It's up to you how you feel about it. It can be a cause of frustration or a motor that keeps you energized and motivated every single day. Since sales is largely based on social skills, it gives the opportunity to feel a flow state, the mental state of higher consciousness caused by total dedication to perform activity. State of full immersion where you are energized and focused. If you totally involved in the process, you may experience the greater pleasure and what initially filled you with fear will become a lifestyle, a path that is hard to get off. Every doctor who treats their patients must be familiar with basics of human anatomy and physiology. No matter if it's a dentist or a surgeon. Every engineer must know the basics of mathematics and physics. A lawyer, applicable law. Similarly, job in sales requires social skills and knowledge of the basics of psychology. To be successful, you need to constantly expand your awareness and improve in areas where you don't feel confident. I've seen dozens of people who begin and give up. Great expectations ended in great disappointment. The pressure they put on themselves or allowed to be put on them began to slowly take their motivation away. Unrealistic expectations were verified by reality. To avoid that, you need to lot of self-control and desire to overcome your limitations. That's why mindset is so important. Willingness to try new things and take on new challenges. Keep in mind that sales primarily requires a lot of work on yourself, not on the client. If someone doesn't want to change, professional sales is most likely not for him. If you want to constantly improve yourself and your social skills, you couldn't have made better choice. In the description of this video, you will find links to videos describing in detail how to start a conversation with a new client, what to do during a meeting, how to build a rapport, and of course, how to close a sale. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon.